more than the recipe. What I have is an awesome process. And I want you to meet the newest member of the Quick and Carry family. We have a Ninja Foodie sitting here next to me. And I'm gonna do a reveal first. Watch what we have in the pot today. A beautifully done meatloaf. And I have to say, this is the coolest way I've ever seen to make a meatloaf. But you can also do it in the Instant Pot almost as easily. So we'll get back to this in a little while, but I did wanna show you our finished product while we talk about um, what else we're gonna do here today. So um, do you have a New Year's resolution? Is it to cook better, easier, healthier? Uh, leave us a comment and one of you is gonna win a pair of our super awesome tongs. We get comments all the time about how much people love our tongs and our whole utensil set. And um, we love them ourselves because they're made to be used in an instant pot and they're super sturdy. So tell me what your New Year's resolution is, if it's about cooking or not. Uh, good morning, Cindy Redden. How are you? Glad to see you here. Hi, Kathy. Genevieve, you're with us today. So glad to see you, Kathy. How are you? Um, Kathy, you might want one of these. I was a little skeptical, as I am with everything, because I'm a slow food cook, and all this fast stuff was like, oh, do I really need it? But I have to say, the foodie is pretty cool. So let's talk about how this recipe works. This is just a basic meatloaf, but the way you do it in the Instant Pot or the Foodie makes this super easy. And I wanna give a great big thank you to Laura over at the Awe Filled Homemaker. That's awefilledhomemaker.com. I saw her video for this and I thought, okay, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. So I wanted to try her process because you can use any recipe that you love for your meatloaf. I used basically her recipe, just a couple of changes. Uh, you know me, I can't leave a recipe alone. And we're happy to send it to you. So uh, when we ask if you would like our recipe, just say yes. And we're happy to give you a PDF of this recipe and the instructions. So what I have in front of me is the actual meatloaf already prepared. This is just some really nice ground beef, eggs, breadcrumbs, garlic powder, some onions, a little bit of ketchup, salt and pepper. And then you mold it into this by using the bowl that you mixed it in. So let me show you. Here's the bowl that I mixed it in. And I used the bowl to sort of pat it all down and make a nice little loaf. And then I turned it out like that onto this crisscross of tin foil that I have. So there are two pieces of tin foil here. See that? And they're crisscrossed. And you, I padded this to just make it a nicer shape and get it all uniform. And now you take the uh, tin foil and you make a little pan like this. I hope all of you had a happy new year. We are very busy at the Quick and Carry Kitchen this time of year because People like the bags, and we had a big sale on our utensils. So we have had a very busy week in the new year. Glad that 19 has arrived. I like odd years, even though my 18 was wonderful. All right, so do you see I've made this little pan, and now I'm gonna take my trivet, and this is the one that has the handles, but you can use any of them, a silicone one or whatever one you like the best. And I'm putting it on there. And I'm just gonna make sure this is on nice and pretty. And now I'm gonna take my ketchup and in a very bakerly, cake decorate way, I'm gonna put the ketchup all over the top of the meatloaf. There we go. And you can use as much or as little as you want. You could add bacon to the top of this, especially if you're doing it in the foodie. That would be awesome. So you're just going to put on the amount of ketchup that you want on yours. All right, so that's ready to go in the Instant Pot. What I have in the Instant Pot already for you, I'm going to put it over here and show you. I have some new potatoes. I have carrots. And you could put onions if you wanted to. 
I'm gonna take some beef broth. You could use chicken, vegetable, or you could even use water because all this is doing is going over the vegetables. And I'm just put it in there. And this is probably gonna end up being about two cups. I'm using about half in each of this broth. All right. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and put it in. Go down, put my lid on. Where's this lid? This is a little messy. Okay. Once you have your lid locked in place, you set your Instant Pot for 35 minutes. All right, I'm gonna check our messages. Give me just a second here, where are you? Kathy loves the overhead. Uh, what type of meat, Gina? That's a great, great question. I got some beautiful Angus beef hamburger this morning at our local grocery store. So you could use a combination of beef and pork if you like that, just straight up hamburger. Like I said before, if you have a family recipe for meatloaf, use it. Uh, this is just really to show you this wonderful process of using the vegetables and broth at the bottom and then the cool little trivet with a pan made out of tin foil with the meatloaf on top of that. So uh, if you want to use a different kind of meat for yours, that would be fine. This is just a really nice Angus uh, hamburger. So... <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Kathy loves the overhead camera. We do too, and we love hearing your feedback. You know, if you can see it, it really shows you what's going on in the pot, so we really like that. Okay, so here's the process. I'm gonna go back to that. I've put everything in the pot. I've set my Instant Pot for 35 minutes. After it goes off, after the 35 minutes, usually you would do a natural pressure release for anything with meat on it. But in this case, because you're gonna broil it, you can do a quick release of your pressure. And then you're gonna take the, uh, you're gonna take the um, meatloaf out of the Instant Pot, put it on a cookie sheet, put that cookie sheet in your oven and broil it so the ketchup is done. And of course, that's what the foodie does for you. You don't have to move anything because it's first a pressure cooker. So I pressure cook to this for 35 minutes and then I put the lid down, this lid, I took the pressure cooking lid off and put the air fryer lid on. I put it on broil for 10 minutes and here's the coolest thing about the foodie. I really, really appreciate this about it. After five minutes, you can lift up your lid and check it and say, oh, it needs a few more minutes. So I put it down, left it on till eight, lifted it back up to check. And this actually looks perfectly done at 10 minutes of the broil setting on the foodie. So you would do that same thing if you made it in the Instant Pot. You would just take out the meatloaf, put it on a, a, cake, um, a cookie sheet, put it under your broiler for five, eight, 10 minutes, however you like it done. Everybody's ovens are a little bit different. And that way you have a beautiful meatloaf. So I'm gonna see how hot this is. Can I just grab it with my hands? Maybe not. So gonna turn it a little and using my awesome tongs and my hot pad maybe I can get this so I can show it to you there you go that's how it looks it's got just a little brown on the edge and the, um, the ketchup is perfectly done so now I'm gonna bring it over here and as you can see down here are my vegetables they've cooked in broth this whole time they look beautiful these are nice and soft. They're going to be a lot like if you had made a beef roast, a chuck roast. These are gonna be pretty soft. If you would rather that your vegetables are not quite so soft, you can pressure cook the meatloaf for 25 minutes. Take, um, release the pressure, take the meatloaf out, put the vegetables in at that point, put the meatloaf back in, finish cooking for 10 more minutes, and then do your broiling. 
What I want you to understand about that is this. Pressure cooking is very forgiving cooking. You can be very creative with the way that you do it. And even though there are some rules for using these machines, they're not hard and fast. You can learn, especially once you become more comfortable with the technology of an Instant Pot or a foodie, you can learn to do all sorts of cool ways of cooking things. Stopping and starting is fine. You don't have to wait until the end. You can stop it and start it again, which is why if something isn't done to your liking, put it back in for five or 10 more minutes. And that is a wonderful feature of this kind of cooking. All right. Any more comments or questions? Hi, Margaret, how are you today? Yeah, Kathy, where are my silicone mitts? I don't know. I just love this yellow one. Yeah, Terry, you do not need another appliance, but I am gonna tell you, this is a wonderful way to cook. <laughs> and um, I am getting used to it. I've only used it about five times. I made a ham on Christmas day fantastic for ham because of the same process. You pressure cook the ham with a beautiful, I made a gorgeous marinade and then I pressure cooked it for 12 minutes, put the top down, broiled it for about eight minutes and everyone raved about my Christmas ham. So this is a wonderful tool for your kitchen. You just have to learn how to use it and I think you could use it in many different ways for a lot of different recipes. So I'm going to review. First of all, what you do is you put your vegetables in the bottom. I have uh, new potatoes and carrots. You could put whatever you want, green beans, uh, Brussels sprouts, whatever you want down there. Put two cups of broth, one and, at least one and a half cups of broth for the foodie, at least one cup of broth for the Instant Pot. And then you put a crisscross of tin foil in front of you. You make your meatloaf, however you, your recipe. Mine is three eggs, the beef, Italian breadcrumbs, garlic powder, some onions, salt and pepper, and ketchup in it. Shape it with your bowl that you're using. Shape it in the bottom. Turn it out onto your crisscross. Take the crisscross foil and make this cute little bowl, this little pan that it's in. Put it on your trivet, set the trivet in your pressure cooker, 35 minutes. After the 35 minutes are done, you can quick release and then take the trivet out and put it just like this. It'll go right onto a cookie sheet under your broiler for five to 10 minutes and you have a delicious and super easy way to make meatloaf and the rest of your dinner is in the bottom of the pot. So if you'd like the recipe, just say yes when we ask you. We're happy to send it to you. We will have this up on our blog later today with pictures of all of the different steps. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions or talk to you about any ideas that you have, questions about the foodie or the Instant Pot or about this recipe. We love to hear from you. Um, <laughs> Kathy says she would love to learn more about pot and pot cooking. That's basically what this is, is pot and pot cooking, but without a fancy pot. You don't need anything other than tin foil and the trivets that come with um, the wonderful devices that we're all learning to cook with. You know, I'm a very experienced cook and even me, and I've now been using an Instant Pot for a long time and I teach about Instant Pot cooking, I learn something new about these machines every time I cook with them. They are wonderful, and I sure appreciate this easy way to make my family a delicious dinner. So all of us here at the Quick and Carry Kitchen are gonna have meatloaf and vegetables for our lunch today. I can't wait to dig in and see how it is. Let us know if you need anything from the Quick and Carry Kitchen. We'll be back here next Friday with another uh, easy recipe for you. Always, I'm interested in what would you like to see us cook? I'm always looking for good ideas from our audience, so I would love to hear from you. And uh, Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you're having a wonderful early start to your year. Welcome 2019. I know it's going to be a great year for the Quick and Carry Kitchen. We're glad to have you along. 
And as our patron saint always used to say, Julia Child said, Bon Appetit!